Hey everybody, this is Steve, your Average Joe's Fantasy Football, and we've got Johnny freaking F1 over here for your IDP trend. So look, it's been a, I feel like it's been such a long week, but it really hasn't, but we just had an amazing NFL draft. I'm sure we both, we're going to talk a lot about the reactions, um, how this is going to play out for obviously your rookie drafts in Dynasty, and of course, even how this may play for your redraft. Um, so we've got a lot of great stuff. We're going to talk some offense again, our reactions, you know, round, round one through seven, where we love them, where we hate them. And then of course, next week we'll be talking defensive players as well. So how are you feeling tonight? Are you ready for this? Man, I'm ready. You know, it's, it's a lot of information coming at us fast. Uh, two weeks ago, we were talking about guys who were at the top of the list. We didn't see them land where we wanted, you know, now it's a different story. So as much as I respect the people who do a lot of research, all that research is out the window now once these guys land. So we're going to go ahead and break that down for you, talking about these offensive rookies, uh, like Steve said, what the, what it means for their value. And uh, we're excited because uh, we've seen a lot of rookies pop off these last couple of years, especially last year. So this is a really important time if you're a fantasy manager out there. So thank you for rocking with us. Yeah, and we're not going to talk like the the, the- – like Caleb Williams, we're not going to do any of that. We're not going to bore you guys. We all know how everyone feels in the community, like where some of these players are. We're going to talk some players that maybe, you know, you really haven't heard of that might be able to have some value for you um, or some players that maybe were a big name that we, again, like Johnny mentioned, we talked a lot about these players and then they landed somewhere where we weren't super excited about. So hopefully this is going to give you some great information. Um, and again, I, Look, we're not we're not gonna stop talking about rookies. We're not gonna stop talking about dynasty. This is some great stuff. Now, before we start off, uh, we want to talk about and you know some of the stuff we've got going on at IDP. So we're thrilled to announce we've got a new partnership uh, with One Shop Stop with Expedia. Uh, look, Mother's Day is what coming up May twelfth. So with that said, uh, that there is a great opportunity. You can use our description down below um, in the link to get you guys some opportunities to take your mom out somewhere, maybe give her a weekend away, maybe for your wife, whatever it may be. So again, we've got some great stuff with Expedia. Make sure you guys obviously remember Mother's Day is May 12th. Do not forget. I don't want anybody, you know, getting smacked by their mom or their wife because they forgot. So let's make sure you guys are using that link down below. So we're going to talk round one. We're going to make it simple, all right? Yes, we all know Caleb Williams and Dunze and Marvin Harrison, like great players. Um, but, you know, one player I love that I think not enough people are talking about is Xavier Leggett. I thought him going to Carolina was a smart thing right now. They get the fifth year option um, capability for him. And, you know, I know he wasn't the highest ranked when it comes to some of these other players, but I thought this was a good spot for him to land. Um, he gets to stay in the Carolinas, right? He played for South Carolina. Now he gets to play for the Carolina Panthers. Um, I thought this was a really good spot. He's probably one of my favorite uh, players. Because I've already done some rookie drafts already. Um, I just love the landing spot. I think this is good for him, good for Bryce Young, good for Deontay Johnson. Um, that's probably one of my favorite players as far as a landing spot goes in the round one. What was somebody you liked? I'll tell you what, I didn't love it, but I do like uh, Brian Thomas Jr. going to Jacksonville. I think there's room for him to grow. He's not somebody who's going to go in there and garner eight to ten targets a game, but he is a burner. He can definitely help that offense, and he can help your fantasy team. All he needs is a couple catches, uh, and they pass so much down there in Jacksonville. I think that it's the right landing spot. We did a mock draft a couple weeks ago. We had neighbors all the way down at 17 to, ja to Jacksonville. They didn't get neighbors, but they got a pretty good rookie uh, in Brian Thomas Jr. So I'm excited for him. Uh, the the landing spot didn't hurt. Um, I think it could have been better, but I think he's going to be used in an offense right off the bat. So I like this one for uh, redraft and, and mostly dynasty too. Yeah, I, I actually kind of agree with you. I wasn't sure Brian Thomas Jr. was the right spot for Jacksonville. And the more I look at it and the more I start thinking, like they absolutely want to help. Trevor Lawrence, right? Like they want to give him the best opportunity. So I think for him going there, I think that just literally gave this offense, like we're going to pass the ball. We're going to obviously be someone that's going to give Lawrence the opportunity to really succeed. And I think for him, I think he doesn't have to be put as the wide receiver one. You still got Kirk there. You got Evan Ingram. Like I thought that was a good move. Um, so I know, you know, now you met, I know you mentioned neighbors and we're not going to really deep dive, but I think a lot of people, even though I've seen a lot of these rookie drafts already, I still think people are high on neighbors, even though a lot of people hated the landing spot. Um, now, someone I didn't like the landing spot, and I'm not even going to mention 
will probably make it the obvious, but I didn't love the landing spot for, for Brock Bowers. Mm, yeah. Like Bowers, I thought was, you know, you got, you got an amazing tight end um, coming into the league and you, you saw last year how great tight ends were, um, you know, that was, was really a forgotten position when it comes to fantasy and everyone's super excited thinking Miami or Cincy or something LA, like, and then Vegas, like, it just didn't make a lot of sense. I think Vegas had other holes that they could have filled. Um, so I wasn't cr- super crazy about that spot. I mean, I think they're going to probably use a more wide receiver than anything else. But, um, yeah, I wasn't super crazy about Brock Bowers at all. Yeah, maybe there was a little bit of, like, they they thought they were going to get panics. They thought they were safe. And all of a sudden, boom, that, that uh, you know, dream crashed down. And now they maybe took the best player. I think Brock yeah. Bowers is a great player. Um, maybe, you know, now we're having rumblings of like, oh, is this the Aaron Hernandez and Gronk days? You know, can they run two uh, tight ends? So I think that glimmer is still there. But, uh, you know, for, for real life uh, considerations, I think it is going to be tough, man. If he went to a team like New York or Miami, it could have been a lot better for Brock Bowers. But, hey, maybe if you're really a believer, you get him for a cheaper price now. And uh, I know some people really like him. And I like Gardner Minshew there. I think if if he can rise to the top and, you know, make mayor – uh, put him on the back burner. I think he can still be pretty productive. So this, this, we'll see. The jury's still out on that one. Yeah. Anybody you hated as far as that first round? Uh, you know what? I, I hated neighbors. Really did. I don't think I'm, I'm not backing him. You know, I, I said that before, and I'll stick by it. If he goes to, and he did go to New York uh, with Daniel Jones, I'm not a Daniel Jones believer. Don't think he turns yeah. it around. Um, and I don't think that uh, neighbors is going to change that. So. Um, yeah, I definitely neighbors was one for me. And of course, uh, Michael Penix, you know, I think he's a great quarterback, yeah. but uh, man, what are they doing? You know, just uh, financially there in Atlanta, they had Kirk Cousins looks like for two, three years. And then all of a sudden Michael Penix is here, you know, and really clouds things up. Uh, I think he could have been better off going to a team like Oakland, Denver, you know, if, if, immediately for fantasy, but uh, maybe in dynasty, he's still, you know, highly touted. I mean, it, all it takes is one injury. Um, you yeah. know, bad quarterback play could happen, right? I, I'm not, a, I'm not a, personally, I'm not a big believer in Kirk Cousins, even in, um, yeah. you know, even in Atlanta. So uh, I just think it's a it run first offense and uh, I'm kind of out, out on the cards there. Yeah. It sucks because I was such a huge Michael Penix fan. Like I was hoping he would land in the right spot um, because I think like he could have, I think his talent, I know there's injury concerns and his age is definitely concern. Um, but I just felt like the way he played and what I saw from him in college, and I'm a little biased because, you know, um, I just, I have some, some personal, like, you know, um, things ties to, to him. So I thought that was a really crappy spot to kind of land in. I get it. Like you, you, you're, you're taking that Jordan love situation. You're, you're getting your quarterback that you believe in now and in hopes that he learns from the veteran and in two or three years, now you've got, you know, a potential, you know, pro bowl a quarterback, but in two to three years, you're talking about a quarterback who's now going to be, you know, 26, 27, like depending on the age, like, and I get it. Quarterbacks can play a lot longer than they have been in the past. Cause like you can't even touch them without getting a flag. So that helps. But um, I thought he could have finished as like the second best quarterback in this draft class. Like I really do believe that talent in him. Um, and now I've, I've kind of, yeah, the landing spot definitely, definitely hurt. I will say in rookie drafts though, uh, I would say go for it if you can. I, I'm seeing him fall in the mid to late second round and even in super flex league. So I still think he's valuable there. Put him on your taxi. Like obviously the Falcons are doing and just let him sit there for a little bit. Um, and then maybe you've got yourself a, a top, you know, 15 quarterback in a couple of years, you know? So yeah, I, I think that definitely hurt. So now we're talking round two. Round two, I think, is probably – round two and three are my favorite dra- rounds in the NFL draft because I think that's where you get your your best players. Round one can be such a hit or miss, I think, in, in these draft processes, and I think you're really getting your best players in round two and three. Um, when it comes to round two, I think you already know my answer as far as who my favorite uh, pickup, and that's, of course, Keon Coleman from Florida State. Um, like, that was by far my favorite. Like, seeing him go to Buffalo um, – it kind of sucks that Buffalo didn't get him in the first to give him that fifth year option. Uh, financially, it kind of would have made more sense, but I get why they were trading back. But Keon Coleman landing in Buffalo, at, again, I thought that was the best move. He, I'm trying to get him in every rookie draft I can. And because he was drafted in the second, round, I think his draft capital affected him when it came, came to rookie drafts because I've already seen him fall in the second round, mm-hmm. like mid 
like early to mid second round, kind of like he was in the NFL. And I think that's an absolute steal because he comes in, I think, as the wide receiver one. I mean, mm-hmm. I love Curtis Samuel. I love Khalil Shakir. But I think his body style and the way he plays, I think he becomes the wide receiver one clearly in this offense. Yeah, I think so, too. That's the hope, you know, is um, they needed uh, somebody to come out and, and step up and be that number one. They lost a lot in the offseason, lost Diggs, lost Gabe Davis. So they definitely have a void. Um, one guy I saw they brought in, Quintez Cephas. That's another interesting one. He had a, a nice year a couple years yeah. ago in Detroit. I saw them add him, too. So it's going to be interesting how things shake out there in Buffalo. But I do expect Coleman to have a huge season. And when we talk landing spots, man, I don't think there is one better in the draft. So I really – I back that, and I, you know, you you kind of put me on to Keon Coleman, and um, you know, I went to watch his tape, and really, wow, this guy's big. I called him like a poor man's Mike Evans. He's a big physical receiver, and he's quick too. So I like yeah. him a lot. I think he's going to be great, um, not only in in redraft but dynasty too. Yeah, I I, I like I love this kid, and uh, I hope he does turn out to be the player I think he could be. Yeah. So anybody in round two you fell in love with that you think? Yeah, you know what? I had a couple on the defensive side. We'll get to that next week. But right now, <clears throat> Jonathan Brooks to Carolina, I, I like it. You know, and it's not like, a um, you know, right off the bat, this guy's going to be money. I don't know if he's going to really get the starting nod um, to begin the season. I'm not expecting that. But I do expect him to uh, get his fair crack. You know, this guy is good at catching the ball. He's definitely going to be needed on third downs. Uh, I think maybe a little bit more than third downs. Now, Carolina came out and said that they – back Miles Sanders, they they uh, back Chuba Hubbard. And I can kind of get that one because we we rode for Chuba Hubbard. We said if he ended up uh, making it unscathed, you know, no no real uh, competition for snaps, that we really liked him still. Now I think with Brooks, that that's changes a little bit. I'm, I'm a little bit hopping off the bandwagon of Chuba. I still think he'll be maybe an under, undervalued player in redraft, you know, somebody who's definitely going to go later now, but it may be a value pick. But I do expect in the season some time for Brooks uh, to maybe start on third down, have a role. But I, I'm not buying the Miles Sanders, man. I, I like him. He's from Pittsburgh. I uh, respect him, you know, to the moon and back. But at the same time, what we saw last year was not the same guy in Philly. So mm-hmm. if Carolina can back him all they want, I'm out on Miles Sanders. And I do think Jonathan Brooks is going to hit at some point in his rookie year. Yeah, definitely true. Um, obviously, everyone had thought. Dallas was going to get drawn Jonathan Brooks. And I think his value would have completely changed um, when it came to, to fantasy, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I like the move for Jonathan Brooks. I like the move for, for Carolina's first future. I don't like the move for Chuba Hubbard, who I was able to get, you know, I went after him this off season, you know, fairly cheap, you know, third round here, there, like I didn't spend a lot, but this, I felt like he could have, had a, a role this season where he could have actually turned it around and become their RB one. But, you know, coaches say one thing and then they, there's another thing that happens. And and I obviously clearly that other thing is, is they truly believe Brooks is a better back mm-hmm. than Hubbard. And they also get him cheaper, right? Hubbard, this was his contract year, you know, and no yeah. one wants to spend money on, on running backs, you know? So I think that was also a factor, you know, the financial aspect of it. So um, yeah, for Brooks, I mean, he's the best running back as far as the landing spots go. I mean, you could we could talk Trey, Trey Benson and uh, you know as far as his landing spot too. But realistically, that was one of the better landing spots, um, just because there is some uncertainty. I think Miles Sanders gets traded or you know whatever or they take deal with the cut, and then obviously Hubbard they don't have to resign. So yeah, I mean, Brooks I think he get eased into this year. I don't expect a lot instantly. Like he's not going to be a redraft value. But for Dynasty, I think his value will absolutely still be there. Now, as far as a player I'm not super in love with, and you may agree with this one too, is I did not like where A.D. Mitchell landed in the second round. Like, don't get me wrong, I think the second round was a good spot for him. Um, Like, there was even, you know, talks of him being in the late first, but landing in Indy was the one spot I didn't want him to go to. Like, you're you're going to a receiving uh, core that has Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Josh Downs, like – what where 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 someone's obviously losing a spot and i think that it's going to be alec pierce i think he's the one who gets affected the most but now you're still dealing with downs who i loved i thought he was a great wide receiver too opposite of Pittman. like you didn't need ad mitchell and i think now there's so much uncertainty i mean maybe they're just trying to grab as many receivers for anthony richardson but i don't think that's what anthony richardson's game is all about i think he's a guy very similar to lamar where he can get you you know throw you three thousand yards thirty four hundred yards 
Russian, you know, like that's his game and that's okay. So adding these extra receivers, I felt was, I just thought it was too much. I was like, man, let AD go to a team that, that could have used him. You know, I felt like even Cincy would have been a good spot. At least there, I know they're going to th- throw to their third receiver. I just don't think Anthony Richardson is going to throw enough to add value for AD Mitchell. And so um, I've been avoiding him in every rookie draft I've been in. I just, I hate the spot that he landed. Yeah, for sure. I'm back in that too. And good point about Richardson. You know, in theory, it's good to get him, um, you know, better receivers bulk up there, but that's really not his game as they're airing the ball out. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. That's kind of a moot point. Um, yeah, I, I think there was a lot of, a lot better landing spots that Mitchell could have gone. Uh, I'm out on him as well. Maybe in Dynasty, you know, he does uh, rise through the ranks and, and, you know, becomes a, number two, number three receiver there with time. That's what you're hoping for. And I think the potential's certainly there. He's a great player, but I'm um, definitely someone as of right now that I'm not recommending uh, when it comes to redraft talk. Yeah, that for sure. Absolutely not. Is there anybody else in the second round that you didn't love their landing spot or just kind of not really sold on? Um, For offense, no. There's, we saw a lot of defensive guys go, a lot yeah, of edge rushers, heavy then. tackles. Um, but I in this round three, it's going to be some heavy hitters. I'll I'll start it off with uh, moving into yeah. round three, Trey Benson. Yeah, Trey Benson, love that landing spot. Uh, you know what? W- w- when when we talk about Arizona Cardinals, of course James Conner, and I was somebody who was off the James Conner. I'll, I'll go on the record and say I was wrong. I was not touching him myself. Limited upside. Um, he defied the odds last year when he was healthy. Really did well. Um, at some point, I'm going to be right by saying, you know, he's going to get hurt. He's not going to have that high ceiling. At some point, it's going to happen. Now, you look at uh, the Arizona Cardinals. They drafted uh, Keontae Ingram. There's been a couple of running backs that, like, have been drafted, like, oh, this guy's the next one. So it's like, yeah. man, I'm not going to get, get caught again on the same, you know, um, hook and line. But at the same time, I think Trey Benson's a legit prospect. And uh, as as Connor only gets older and older, I think that, you know, he's more injury prone. So, um, I, I think there's a real scenario here where Connor does get hurt. Um, then Trey Benson steps in and shows out, and they're re- looking to rejuvenate, you know, liven up youth in their team. They have Marvin Harrison there. I think they try to flip this, the script on their their franchise, their team, what they what they've been, you know, what they've got going on. So I really like Trey Benson. I think this is uh, definitely not somebody who's a, you know you're you're looking at right off the bat and redraft. This is going to be one of the better handcuffs, I think, in the. Uh, redraft league but for dynasty i really like the landing spot um you know him him and brooks i think uh, maybe brooks has more standalone value right away but i wouldn't be surprised if you know like i said injury to connor and trey benson absolutely uh skyrockets through the rankings steve what do you think about benson yeah benson is benson has more value in redraft this year he has more value in dynasty this year compared to jonathan brooks uh just because that let's be honest like as as, as well as Connor has been there has been injury issues right like he hasn't really played a full season uh, without something nagging him so Benson automatically jumps into the conversation of having value this season and I yeah he's a great prospect I think him and him and Jonathan Brooks could have gone back and forth as far as who what running back was going to go first um Dynasty I think his his value is still there because you're, you're dealing with a lot more age factor compared to Brooks Brooks is dealing with just running backs that maybe Carolina doesn't want to pay or believe in so that scenario is a little bit different. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset if like you're needing a running back for your your dynasty team and you're going between you know Trey Benson or Jonathan Brooks. I wouldn't be mad at t- if you took you know Benson over Brooks. Like I don't think that would be a bad thing for you. Um, I think Brooks has a little more value in the long run, like you mentioned. But yeah, I think this is a, a good spot. Um, and I think they could, e- I think they even did this just to kind of lower the touches for Connor. I think just to kind of limit so, so he can be healthy all season. So I think instantly Benson has a lot more value, uh, mm-hmm. for sure. So now a player I loved in this, in this round, in the third round of the draft, I love Roman Wilson from Michigan oh, yeah. going to Pittsburgh. Like I, you know, Pitts, I've, we've talked about it. Pittsburgh does a great job of getting good receivers and then they don't want to pay them. And that's okay. That's just how the process works. But you got a good receiver who I think doesn't need pressure on him. He comes in automatically, I think, as the wide receiver too, um, opposite of Pickens. Um, we're cu- I'm curious. I'm th- I think you're probably the same way, like how this offense looks. I think it's still going to be through the running game. And obviously, you know, the fifth year option just got broken. That That's not going to happen with Najee, but I still think they believe in him. I think they want to see what happens this year. 
So I think the running game between Warren and, and Najee does not put a lot of pressure on Russell Wilson. But I still think there's enough value that I think Roman Wilson will have, like I think he'll have instant value in redraft. Not super, but instant. I think he's a nice little possible wide receiver three or something like that. Again, if you're getting him late. And then I think his dynasty value is there. I love I loved this pick for, for, for Pittsburgh. I didn't have to spend a lot. And I thought they had a really good receiver. I, I had him higher than some of the other players that went in the second round. So yeah. um, I love that pick for, for, for Pittsburgh, for sure. Yeah. I like Roman Wilson too. And I think, uh, you know, he's somebody, when we talk about how stacked this, this wide receiver class was really kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit, but boom, now he's landing spots, Pittsburgh, um, Pittsburgh. I've said before, like they got to kind of, the game is, is throwing now. They got to be better throwing the ball. I think they brought in Russell Wilson. They, they made moves on the offensive line to help out. So I think the, the pieces are there. Um, so yeah. I really do like, uh, Roman Wilson, I think he definitely has a, a – he's a sneaky, safe floor kind of play, I think, automatically in redraft. I don't think the Steelers brought him in to, like, take it slow. I think the uh, the reins are off on Wilson, and I think he's going to get some good uh, target value. And um, I wouldn't – you know, I wouldn't expect him to be Deontay Johnson all of a sudden, but Deontay Johnson is now gone. He's in Carolina, and those snaps aren't just going to go to George Pickens. They're not just going to go to Fryermuth. They're going to be yeah. spread throughout. Uh, and so Roman Wilson is is in uh, a premium place to reap the benefits of that landing spot. And I, I'm really excited. You know, when we talk about Malik Neighbors, Harrison's, of course, that's who we're excited to see. But I think, uh, you know, Roman Wilson is going to surprise a lot of people and be on a lot of fantasy teams. And we're going to see the shares, the value only go up. So definitely a sneaky guy right there. And I love that pick as well. Yeah. And speaking of Michigan, the player I did not love in this this round was Blake Corum. Like, mm-hmm. It wasn't, it's not Blake himself. It's just going to the Rams absolutely like completely like shocked me. Like you just had Kyron Williams, who was a young back, come up and be one of the best running backs in fantasy last season, just dominating on the ground, dominating in the red zone, scoring touchdowns left and right. And then you just drafted Corum. Like I don't understand that. And instantly the first thought is, well, Kyron Williams' value just completely changed. His red zone threat has completely changed because Corum is that type of guy who can be a red zone threat. Like he would have been a great running back in a team that needed somebody with a little bit extra oomph. You know, maybe you've got a great receiving back style, you know, running back. Corum's a great add on. Like Corum had that type of potential. So now, like, I. I've not gone through all my running back rankings. I've been going back and forth between those players. I am so torn between what to do with Corum and Kyron because it just, I, I don't know what McVay's thought process was. Um, I get it. You got a running back. Maybe you need to add an extra player. Um, but I hated like this landing spot. I really just am. I'm trying to figure out what is the best solution for these players um, coming into this upcoming season. And then in dynasty, because it's not like Kyron's an old back. Like you just, he's young. So Corum's values can be tied to Kyron at this point. Um, so I did not fall in love with that spot at all. Yeah, I feel that, man. I, I think this one can go two ways, you know, because uh, a couple pods ago in the, in the off season, we were talking about guys that should be rostered right now in dynasty leagues, especially deeper. And I'd mentioned Ronnie rivers because he was like by default, the backup there, the only guy that if Kyron got hurt, he was going to step in. Um, obviously he was not like, uh, somebody you're going to be relying on your, as your second two of two, uh, yep. maybe they have Jake Funk too. So like uh, really deep there, but yeah, Ronnie rivers, you didn't want to rely on him. So you went and got a rookie and, and you got a fine rookie, you know, Blake Quorum's a good running back. Now the thing is in, uh, <clears throat> for the chart or for the, I'm sorry, for the, uh, Rams, they, they really focus on one running back. Sean McVay usually rolls with that run one running back, but. I love Kyron Williams myself. I picked him up. I was all about him and Puka this year early on, smash plays. And I think he's dynamite. I really like Kyron Williams. A lot of people were going to knock him a uh, small back, you know, this, that. He had injur- injury. Um, and that might be true. You know, maybe Kyron Williams is great on the field, but, like, he just is going to have trouble staying on the field. And then, and that's yeah. twofold because in that situation, Blake Corum, I think, could be a great running back, great landing spot because there's not much in front of him. But until then, you know, until Kyron's hurt, uh, yeah. I don't see him really seeing the field much, which is a big hurt. You know, if you're drafting, especially in redraft, or if you were uh, hurting in dynasty and you need these guys right now, yeah, I don't think Blake Corm's your guy. But, uh, yeah, I, I still have some faith in him. I think if if an injury eventually will happen to, to Kyron, knock on wood, 
that he's going to be a nice play. And I think that uh, being that they only use one running back, if it's not Kyron, it's going to be him, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's an absolute handcuff. Like when we talk about that when we're coming into the redraft season, you know, he's definitely going to be someone you have to have in your late rounds if you've got Kyron just to make sure you've got a backup plan. Because like you mentioned, I mean, that's the one thing, you know, like the Rams don't use multiple backs. Like they are one of the few teams that are a – this is our running back and we're going to use and abuse. Like that's the type of style they play. They don't play the committee aspect. So, you know, Kyron definitely comes in as the RB one. He's going to be the guy who's going to get 20 plus touches. And then, you know, you'll get a breather here or there from Corum. But yeah, if something does happen, Corum's value absolutely skyrockets. So he's definitely going to be stronger. I think in redraft, um, I would say more than I would think, you know, dynasty at this point, like there's some other running backs I would take. But, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about the rest of this draft. There were a lot of running backs that I thought their position, where they fell, I was not in love with. Like, this running back class already struggled, and then they got some spots that you're like, man, what was this NFL? And I get it. We're a committee-style league now, you know? Look at, you know, Dallas, you know, a team that everyone thought was going to get a running back, but they don't want to do that anymore. They just want to do a committee. And you're Mm going to find that a lot in a lot of teams, for sure. Right, right. One guy I did not uh, like their landing spot, how we were talking about that right now. Uh, I'll, I'll give mine Lloyd, uh, Marshawn Lloyd goes to yeah. Green Bay. I think they use Josh Jacobs has been his usage is crazy uh, through his time in Vegas. Um, now he comes here to Green Bay. I think it's going to be the same. And, and hey, they still got a guy named A.J. Dillon on that team. So uh, this is somebody who definitely is not going to be on the, uh, you know, the, the high ADP and, and redraft, but definitely somebody who's being looked at in dynasty. And I think, uh, you know, maybe if, if there's an injury to Jacobs, then I think he can easily surpass Dylan. I think Dylan's mm-hmm. kind of like, he has his role at this point. Um, but until then, uh, I'm not, I'm not really banking on much out of, of Lloyd. I didn't like this landing spot. Um, I, even if there is an injury to, uh, uh, to Josh Jacobs there, who knows, maybe they, the coaching staff says AJ Dillon's familiar with yeah. the team. You know, I, I, there's nothing guaranteed with Lloyd. So, um, I definitely think don't forget about him because he has high potential, but just when is that potential ever going to come to fruition is the question. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I saw so many people are like, Oh, Marshawn Lloyd, this is a great spot because J- Josh Jacobs is practically on a one year contract and Lloyd can come in as the, but that's the guy and Dylan's going to be replaced. Like that's not necessarily true. Like, I don't know where this whole J- Josh Jacobs is on a one year. I mean, at least from my understanding on his contract is yeah. I mean, they could release him, Sure. But if they release him next year, it's a $9 million cap hit. Mm. You know, if you release him in 2026, it's a six million dollar cap hit. Like, you're, he's not a rental. Like Josh Jacobs came into this as a as a, as a signed back, and he is their back. I mean, you wouldn't get rid of your one of your, I would say, most coveted and loved running backs in Aaron Jones to get Josh Jacobs just to put Marshawn Lloyd in there. Right. So I think Marshawn Lloyd is more of a replacement for AJ D- Dillon. I just think they haven't been impressed with AJ Dillon. Like AJ Dillon has had so many opportunities. And he has never really truly taken old hold of that offense. Like he was, I thought, I think he was brought in to be the successor to Aaron Jones and just never really happened. So I think this is more says more about AJ Dillon. And I think AJ Dillon dynasty stock has completely been affected. Like he's not even a, a, somebody you want to have as a handcuff. I think Marshawn becomes that guy, but this whole misconception of like, Oh yeah, he's going to replace Josh. Chick- no, no, Get out of here like that. I don't know where that's even coming from. Um, one, of, one of the guys, uh, one of the, one of my favorite people I love to follow on Twitter, uh, Jesse Moeller, who does the uh, fantasy uh, universe. Like he said it best. Like, why are we keep talking about that? Like, he's going to affect the cap. Like, and I'm like, finally, someone said it. None of these. I don't know. But yeah, Marshall Lloyd, uh, like I, I think you and I both, like we start looking at this. The running backs did not fall in the best spots. Like we don't, we don't even talk about the Jets. The Jets drafted every running back in this class, I feel like. And I don't understand it when you have a premier running back in Brees Hall. Like, Brees Hall is a top five running back. Yep. And then you just drafted, like, five of them. I, I don't understand the logic, but that's the Jets. They like to, they like to, you know, make questionable things. Right. So, before we move to round four, uh, I want to talk about some things, obviously, that we do at, you know, IDP. And one of the things that we are, um, we are a partner with Trophy Smack. And again... I want to mention it, Mother's Day, May 12th. So with them upon us, uh, don't forget, you know, and again, don't put yourself in the doghouse. 
uh, with a boring gift or anything for your mom or for your, your wife. Uh, Trophy Smack does have, obviously, belts and rings and things like that. But there's also some other stuff that you can get for them. Coffee mugs, like World's Best Mom. So, again, use us as a way to get some great gifts for your mom or wife for Mother's Day. Um, and, again, if you guys obviously use promo code IDP, guys, um, at the checkout, you get a free championship ring with the purchase of a custom trophy or belt. And then, of course, if you need to get some stuff for Mother's Day, check out that. So make sure you guys hit that description down below. Click on the link. Buy some stuff. I may not be your mom, but you can send me some things your way if you want. I will gladly take a ring or a trophy. Um, but again, make sure you guys are using that. And don't forget to hit the promo code of IDP, guys. So round four. I think there was a lot of value in this round. Um, you know, you're looking at this. I think there were some great receivers that um, I thought could have gone higher that fell in the round four. And, um, you know, I, I fell in love with a few of them. But one player um, who I've been hard on, and I'm, I'm going to give him some redemption, is Tez Walker for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, he was someone that, you know, I saw him at the Senior Bowl. Um, I know he was hot. He, he was great for North Carolina. Him and Drake May played really well together. Tez had some great games. But then when I watched him live at the Senior Bowl, I was not impressed. There were too many opportunities. He just didn't run the routes very well. There were opportunities where he just couldn't catch the ball. And some of it's, you know, quarterback play. I get it. You're, you're thrown in with quarterbacks. You don't have that same rapport. Um, he just, he was heavily targeted in that game and they tried to give him opportunities. He just, he didn't really shine that I thought he was going to. So I was kind of, kind of disappointed. But then I started thinking, you know, over the weekend and how this draft class went, I think what I think what Baltimore's trying to do is they are trying to give Lamar the best opportunity to, to be the best quarterback he can be, not just through the ground, but also through the air. And I know they obviously, you know, re-signed, you know, Rashad Bateman, they signed an extension. You got Zay Flowers, who I absolutely love for Boston College. Um, but then I think getting Tez Walker actually was a great play. Because if Bateman doesn't work out, there's a chance Bateman has struggled and they keep trying to they keep trying to make him a thing. Right. Um, but there's a chance he just it's just it doesn't you know translate at all in 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 this game. Um, I think Tez Walker fell into a decent spot. I think he comes into a spot where he becomes the the three. Um, he could possibly become the two, depending how Bateman and Bateman has dealt with a lot of injuries. Um so I actually think this was a great spot. He's not going to be the number one option. He's not going to be even the number two. You got Mark Andrews there. But I think this was a good spot for him. So for a value pick in your rookie dynasty, if you're getting him in the mid to late thirds, maybe late seconds, I mean, I'm okay with that. I think that's a, a value that you may you know, have to wait a year or two, but I think he could easily become a really good receiver that might be a nice wide receiver three or flex play, depending on how your roster size is. So I, I actually love the spot. I wasn't in love with him, but I think the spot is great for him to really uh, shine. And you know what? I think there's a lot of people out there um, that will say, you know, Baltimore runs the ball a lot. They got Derrick Henry. They're going to run it more. Um, they're not really looking Walker's way. So, uh, yeah, if you're somebody who has that thought, who has that intuition, you know, about Devontae's Walker, take it because uh, I think there, there's room for opportunity there. They, they, they need somebody on the outside, somebody uh, they, they can throw the ball deep to. I think uh, him and Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson works his magic. I mean, even Nelson Aguilar there, even though he's not with the team anymore, even he had his days, you know. So I think this uh, highly touted prospect comes in. I think he can do well, you know, be that number two. I think he can easily surpass Rashad Bateman. Good point on Bateman. I was in on him as a rookie, but he just I – mean, he had a nice year as a rookie. Every year after that, just so hurt. And yeah. at this point, I'm like, is he even guaranteed anything? So I'm really not afraid of him. But I do think Rashad Bateman, you know, it's not – it's uh, He's not somebody who's on his hanging by a thread. You know, he's not 32 years old. He's still young. He could, he could definitely make things turn around. So um, this is a risky pick, but uh, I think it, on the outside looking in, there's more to it than, you know, what you may see on the surface. So I, I do like it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Troy Franklin? I like this guy going to Denver. I mean, they lose Sutton. They, if they could possibly lose Sutton, it would help him a lot. Yeah. All I really have is Mims. I love Mims. If you've watched my videos, I back Mims to the moon and back. But – um, just say that doesn't happen or, you know, we know he's not going to be a big volume receiver. I think there's going to be room for, for targets here uh, for Franklin. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, Franklin definitely lands in a good spot because I think Sutton does eventually get moved. Um, I just, there's, I don't think there's a way they're going to continue this season with him as their wide receiver one. Um, he wants out. I think they want to move on from the money. So I think he gets moved. 
which I, I know you're a big Mims fan and I, and I, I do like Mims, but I think if Sutton is gone, I think that automatically puts Troy Franklin as the wide receiver one. I agree um, with that. Yeah. He, he good size. I mean, good size to a degree. Like he's got, he's got to build out his frame a little bit more without affecting his speed. Cause he's what, I think a buck 85, um, but he's six, two or six, three. Like he's, he's a little lengthy, but like, I think if he builds up a little bit muscle this off season, um, he's got his quarterback, but he's got his college quarterback, Bo Nix. And I think that only plays a big factor. I think that's huge. I will say this as crazy as it sounds, I think because of the draft capital with him falling to the fourth round, I think the casual NFL fan, um, are afraid to draft him. I have seen, I've been able to grab Troy Franklin in two leagues of mine. I got him at the 205, and then I got him at one at the 210. Mm. And um, I'm okay with taking a middle to, to la- late second, and I don't feel like I risked anything at all. I think I could, I think I fell into a position where I've got the potential wide receiver one for the Denver team that, yeah, do we expect a lot? No, but the fact that he's got his, his quarterback from his college you know, game day. And I think that was huge. Um, I, I like it. I think it was a good move. I think him falling down was huge. I think a lot of people have now a lot of question marks because of him falling down. Cause I think a lot of people expected him in the second round. So him going to the fourth was, uh, was definitely a fall that no one had anticipated, but I think the spot was perfect. Um, and I think he's very valuable in fantasy because the fact that he's just not being drafted anywhere near the first or even early second at all. So I think his value is really strong. And at the same time, you know, I was somebody who, I, <laughs> if you're in a fantasy league with me, you get a lot of trades, right? So I t- took Cortland Sutton last year in a bunch of leagues just because I knew he was going to have some good games. He would be a consistent receiver in trade bait. So I was uh, sending him for anything, you know, a little small upgrade. I was sending him, packaging him with another player, getting a better player. I mean, I, probably three or four leagues that I, like, kicked myself. Like, man, this is Cortland Sutton. He was really, really put the pieces together. Looking at the years before, the touchdowns weren't there. The uh, re- receptions, the consistency wasn't there. So, I don't know about you, but I'd be really damn shocked if if uh, Cortland Sutton stayed number one, stayed on the team at number two, did anything close to the pace he was on this year. I'd be shocked. I don't, I don't think he has it in him. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but what do you think? Yeah, I just I I think he's just his own motivation. I just think he just is so done with this team. I think he knows that it's clearly a rebuild aspect. Um, he's not part of Sean Payton's plan at all, anyways. I mean, you, they already moved Jerry Judy. There was talks of them both being moved. So, like, obviously, clear. Like, it's like, how do you feel good about being on a team that a new head coach comes in? You're not part of that draft process. You weren't his guy. It's tough to come into work and just feel motivated. Like, he clearly wants to move on. I think Denver does want to move on. I think just Denver is just asking for too much at this point, which they, mm-hmm. I get it. That's your best receiver. He played really well last season. He had some amazing games. I mean, that toe tap last season to help them. I mean, so it's not like he's a scrub. Like I think you put him on a team that needs another receiver, not necessarily a wide receiver one, but just a wide receiver two. And he's absolutely, I think even dynasty wise and fantasy wise, he's going to be a, a stud, but yeah, I, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know what Denver's trying to do. I think they're just trying to ask for too much. And unfortunately it's keeping Cortland, uh, you know, held hostage, but I think it does get moved. Cause I think they like Troy Franklin. Um, you know, you get Mims, obviously you got Dolce. I mean, this offense isn't scary. No one's worried about this offense. I feel bad for, you know, Javante Williams and anybody who loves him. Um, right. Cause the value is just not there. I mean, we're talking redraft. A lot of these players, I'm not touching any Denver player when it comes to redraft at this point, you know, right. except for out of the IDP side, with you know, Singleton and stuff, oh, yeah. but, you know, I, anybody else, I'm I'm going to steer clear um, if I can. So, yeah, I Troy Franklin's a great move. I think he does have strong value in Dynasty. I thought he was a, a, in a perfect spot. So, anybody you didn't, like, really fall in love in this round? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Jatavian Sanders. I don't know. You know, a lot of people will talk. They like the spot. They need a tight end there in Carolina. Um, but like, when was a lot? And I'm one of these guys, you know, and I, I said it before I was wrong uh, two years ago, last year about um, what was his name? Okereke. I was like, mm-hmm. when have the New York Giants had a strong IDP linebacker? I would not back him. I tweeted he's going to be a bust and he did it. He defied the odds. Mm-hmm. So it does happen. Um, but I think there is some truth to, you know, what I'll be saying in, in the there's just not really any tight, tight ends that are relevant um, coming from Carolina. 
Uh, maybe I'm wrong, and I'll, I'll admit that if I am, but he's in a great landing spot. I'll give him that. Um, should get peppered young quarterback, but uh, Bryce Young really – I mean, n- number one, they really haven't had a good tight end there to help Bryce Young. And number two, he didn't throw to the, the tight ends much last year. So, I, st- yeah. I mean, this, this, this Carolina offense in general, they just got so many pieces. They still have Mingo. They still have other receivers there. Thielen's still there. You know, there's there's going to be – we could look at it in five different ways and, and make it look gold for those five different ways. But I think for every way you can say it's going to go good, it can go the opposite way. So um, I'm not somebody who's going to throw a lot of investment in him. I do think later, you know, if you're a tight end needy team and this is somebody who's at least going to play snaps right away. Yeah. Um, so I do like him in that regard. And maybe there's a chance that, you know, rookie tight ends, we saw what they did last year. Maybe he finds his way through the cracks and, you know, uh, defies the odds and makes it two years in a row. But I'm not banking on it. I'm just not uh, buying it. And I think this is a lot of a lot of managers are going to look at this and say they uh, invested kind of early in the position. He's he was the number two. But to me, I just I don't like the landing spot. Yeah, I mean, the landing spot, I don't know if it's horrible. I think, yeah, the opportunities could be there. Um, I don't know, because like they didn't really use their tight end as much um as like other teams so yeah i don't know if it's more so J- jatavian or if it's the landing spot but i do like i've been torn on that one i mean i have him in i got i did draft him own league in the in a late third because i was like why not you know he was he, he's got the draft capital as far as like where he uh, was drafted based off other tight ends so i'm okay with taking the risk in a late third but i don't expect much out of him um yeah it's a tough one you mean you could have talked about a couple other tight ends, I think, like Theo Johnson to, to New York. I'm not sure. Um, you got Bellinger. Obviously, I think Waller is expected, you know, to announce that retirement officially. Nothing's been official yet, but um who I who I did not fall in love with, and I've I've gone back and forth. I, I thought about talking Jalen Wright, you know, for Miami, but the running back I actually did not fall in love with uh, because of the landing spot is Braylon Allen. Like again, I don't understand the aspect of of just New York's got a great running back. I get it. You want a second running back, but they had some, they had, I felt like the, some decent backups and I don't think Braylon needed to go there. And obviously we'll talk, you know, again, New York gets another running back later in the draft as well. So I wasn't falling in love with that. I get the Jalen Wright aspect because you got a player that, you know, in, a, in an offense that's all about explosion and, and, and being able to, you know, make a one cut and run and things like that. So I get that aspect. And I think they're kind of easing Mostert out of you know this offense eventually. But you also just drafted a running back like Achan. So that one we'll see. But yeah, Braylon Allen was the one I really was not crazy about at all. I just felt that was not the best spot for him at all. Yeah, I'm on board with that. I just I, I don't know what New York is doing. So, and, you know, we're going into the fifth round and, and fifth round, there were some running backs, you know, in that one as well. Cause again, a lot of them went towards the end of the fifth and, you know, these aren't running backs. We're not going to deep dive into, but as far as a player I, who I thought landed at a decent spot, I don't know how relevant they're going to be when it comes to um, fantasy. Cause again, we're talking dynasty and how these guys, you know, are going to play out. I, I felt like, Thrash was a decent move for where he went to the Browns. I know the Browns are full of receivers right now. You've got Elijah, Moore, you know, you got Elijah Moore, you got Cooper, you got Judy, you got Peoples Jones. So like Thrash is going into a position where he's not going to be absolutely needed. Um, but I like Thrash coming out of college. I felt he was a nice little sneaky play when it came to to fantasy. Um, But again, I think Thrash is somebody you can get off of waivers, put on your taxi, just kind of let him sit there. I wouldn't necessarily draft him. But when you're looking at this round of players that in this draft, like I I still think he's got some value. Like looking at the fifth round, there wasn't a super large amount. I mean, the other player I could have mentioned, I'm sure you may mention, but um, because I was torn on, I kind of loved the spot for Spencer Rattler, but I like this spot for Jamari Thrash. I think it's, again, it's a deep, deep spot, but I thought this was a decent spot for him because I think he's got some great receivers ahead of him that he can really learn from and I think has some potential value. Because I don't think People Jones comes back. Um, Mark Cooper's obviously getting a little bit up there in age and his cost is going to be a concern. Um, Elijah Moore, who I do love, uh, I do, I've always liked him. He just, you know, 
unfortunately dealt with the injury last year. And then he played for New York for a while. But um, I, I sneakily like this spot. I'm not drafting him. Thrash is somebody you're getting off waivers. But if you have to get taxi spots for him, I would pick him up. Yeah, I respect that. I mean, you're a guy like me. I'm looking at it like, oh, how many guys are they going to draft? They got David Bell, right? Then they got yeah. uh, Cedric Tillman. I haven't seen anything. So, like, he's completely off my radar. So, in your sense, like, if he's going to do it, then you're going to get over on me hard because I don't think there's – maybe I'm wrong. There Maybe there's other people that, you know, are thinking of the same boat as you. But for me, I'm like, man, you know, and, and keep in mind I'm in Pittsburgh too, so I'm not going to root for any, you know, Browns team. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I just I'm not in on it, you know, I, and I do think he could be a great prospect and defy the odds. I'm not a big um, Jerry Judy fan at all. Didn't like him in Denver. Don't like him here. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's definitely opportunity. It's just like, is he going to, you know, is David Bell Tillman? Are they like thrown in the back and they're going to give him the shot? Because I, I hope he has as good a shot as anybody, you know, rookie receivers they hit nowadays. So um, yeah. last year they didn't for the Browns. Maybe this year is different. I don't I don't see like much in front of him besides like uh you know, um, money, you know, Jerry Judy yeah. costs a lot. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I like him. I mean, I think there's definitely potential there. So, uh, add him to your taxi squad cannot hurt. Yep. Anybody you fell in love with this round? Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't mention, uh, Tracy, Tyrone Tracy from the giants. I like yeah. this guy and I just think it's a great landing spot. I mean, we're, we talked about Eric gray. Well, he's on the back burner now. Like Eric gray was uh -huh. how I said, Ronnie rivers before, like by de default, um, now, I mean, they lost Saquon Barkley. Uh, they have Singletary, but now I think Tracy, you know, as, as much as this wasn't really a guy, we were talking household name, um, combine, draft, things like that. But I think Tyrone Tracy, by uh, the luck of the draw, landing spot is great. And uh, this is definitely somebody who I'm going to say don't leave on the waiver wire. He should definitely be owned, if, even if you're in a shallow league, because this is rags to riches real quick uh, potential-wise, I think, with Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it was a good move. I do. I do understand that aspect because obviously I don't think they're going to just ride, uh, you know, Singletary. So I'm curious how this backfield plays out for, for New York and how they're going to end up using them because and they're not going to put it all on D Daniel Jones. They can't, if they have, if they want to have any type of success, they cannot put it all on the arm of Daniel Jones or his legs. Um, so yeah, Tracy, I think is a, a good spot. Um, one other player that just an honorable mention, just because he's one of my one of my favorite players as a Florida State fan, Jordan Travis. I thought landed in a good spot behind Aaron Rodgers. Um, I don't think he's got any value in, in your rookie drafts, but like you know, we mentioned a lot of these guys you might be able to get on waivers. You know, Jordan Travis was a great you know Florida State quarterback. He now gets to sit behind Aaron Rodgers, dealing with his injury, right, coming off of that, so he doesn't have to play this year. Well, as long as Aaron Rodgers doesn't fall apart. <laughs> but I thought that was a good move. I actually secretly like this. Might be a play where you got a guy who can come in later on, you know, and there's no pressure on Aaron, right? You didn't you didn't draft a replacement, even though Aaron should understand that New York's going to draft a replacement at some point. They cannot rely on a, on a 50 year old Aaron Rodgers. So I thought Jordan Travis again as an honorable like I love. Just because I'm a, a Florida State fan and I, I just kind of have that biased opinion, but I thought, what a great spot for him to kind of go and learn behind one of the best quarterbacks ever. Um, that was nice. I thought it was. I thought it was a nice little play. Kind of went under the radar. Nobody really talked about it because Jordan Travis obviously didn't get to finish out his 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 college career. But I, I, you know, had he played and Florida State had the opportunity to go to the championship, I think Jordan Travis would have been drafted higher. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good landing spot. Definitely under my radar. So, yeah, absolutely. Somebody who's not a household name uh, as far as in the NFL yet. So, uh, I, don't, I don't like Rodgers myself. I think he's only there for one more year. Maybe one yeah. good year. Maybe one great year. Who knows? But um, I think uh, you're you're hoping for the best with Rodgers. And I think is he's definitely going to have uh, – wouldn't that be something? Like Jordan Love kind of takes over for Rodgers. Yeah. Now Travis would take – just the Aaron Rodgers thing. Hey, if you, you need a, a quarterback, just sign Aaron Rodgers and, you know, your backup's going to turn to gold. Um, one guy I'll give you an honorable mention for me. He's from my home. Well, I don't know if he's from my hometown, but he's from uh, – went to Pittsburgh. Bob Means. He goes to the Saints. I think this is, you know, not not on the prospect level, like, oh, no, this is, you know, somebody's going to change the game. But I think definitely Bob Means is like a, a raw talent. I don't think his best mm -hmm. days were at Pitt. I think the best days are actually ahead. And I think this is a good landing spot. I mean, we talk about 
Um, New Orleans offense, they have Olave. Even A.T. Perry at the end of the year last year started producing. Um, Rashid Shahid, a lot of you'll see a lot of blurbs about like, oh, he's their number two. He's in a, to me, he's like he's a special teamer in, in some downfield stretches. You know, like I don't think Rashid Shahid is is taking anything away from anybody. So if you got Olave, um, A.T. Perry, who I'm still high on, and now Bub Means, like maybe Bub Means has some value. Uh, maybe Bob means business, you know, and gets it done on on a on a greater scale. But uh, I definitely think, as far as opportunity for um, pretty immediate uh, fantasy value, I think he has it. Doesn't mean I'm his money in the bank, but I think that's somebody you want to put on your watch list at least. Yeah, I, it's a good move. I mean, again, you got a Lave, and that's about it, right? Like, there's not uh, another receiver outside of that that you're like absolutely in love with. Um, Shahid definitely had some value in, you know, the deep, you know, passing aspect, and he definitely had value in special teams, but you can't rely on him being your wide receiver too. I don't know if be, you know, Bub actually goes into the wide receiver two role. Cause I think like you, I actually like AT pair. I thought that he's, I've been holding on to him for a while to kind of see how that yeah. plays out, but, uh, it's a good move. Um, someone I didn't love though. I did not like the Isaiah Davis um mm. you know draft pick for the jets like again another jets running back i'm not sure why they did this um i don't understand the logic but you're you're just stacking running backs now behind Brees hall i don't know if you're just exp- you know there's a possibility they just think he's gonna get hurt again but i mean again Brees hall was your the best back in fantasy and yet you're just stacking running backs behind him so i did i don't understand and i did not love that move i don't get why they keep why they did it this draft um, but I did not love what they did with Isaiah. Dot, you know, and, and Isaiah could have been in a, in a better position somewhere else. I, I think he was a decent prospect coming out of college. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you, you don't even give me a handcuff. Now I got two handcuffs. Now they're just like null and void. So both off my yeah. Head. And that's yeah. Who do you who do you grab? You know, I mean, maybe you go to the guy that who drafted a little bit sooner, but you're only a, a round apart. You know, so yeah, it just. I didn't get it. I don't like when I saw those picks coming in, I'm like, I don't know what New York is doing. Like you have other needs on this team and you're just drafting running backs. Right. And so did not love it at all. With you. I agree. So obviously we're going to the sixth round. We got some, some stretches here. These are a lot of players we're going to talk about now in the sixth and seventh round are probably players. You're not going to draft probably players that are definitely no, I mean, no redraft value and players that, you know, again, if you're in deep leagues and dynasty and you're looking for somebody to kind of fill your, your roster or you're adding some, some taxi squad. Um, I think there's some players that you, you may want to listen to. I think there are players that again, don't expect much for, for the first few years, but sometimes you get that, that Puka Nakua. You sometimes you get that, you know, Tom Brady. Sometimes you get those players that actually end up being a star and a stud for years to come. So, um, again, no, no, it doesn't harm you when you trap some of these players. If you're going late third, if you're even a, a league that has fourth or fifth rounds in your rookies. Um, so one of the players that, again, I'm a little biased, but Johnny Wilson to the Eagles, um, I thought was a good move. Like, I hate the Eagles. But I thought this was a great move. I thought them signing a, a big receiver like this, who I know there's been conversations of him being a hybrid going to the tight end role, um, you know, to help out, especially when Dallas Goddard's been dealing with injuries. Um, but, you know, you got your two stud receivers and A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, who absolutely guaranteed their contract. They just got extensions. And, you know, why not add a, a, a nice young rookie wide receiver who could be the third at some point, big body. You know, got some value in the red zone. Could be an in, you know, a uh, kind of a slot. You know, just outside the inline version of a big tight end. Like I thought, that was a good move by by Philly. Philly tends to do a really good job drafting. Um, the record never says it. Let's just call it what it is. They didn't. They play well last year, even with the draft that they had last year. But I thought this was a good move from Philly. I hate to give him credit, but I like that move for Johnny Wilson too. I think it's a good spot for him. He doesn't get pressured into being you know, more than what he is. And you got, you know, a good quarterback in Jalen Hurts who's smart, you know, can throw the ball in the right spot. So I like the move for both ends. I thought it was good for, for Johnny Wilson. I thought it was good for, you know, the Eagles. Um, I just hate that that happened as a Cowboy fan, but I thought that was a really good move. Yeah, I agree with that. And they and they keep their receivers there. It seems like they, mm-hmm. you know, they're not like flipping all the time. They kind of uh, 
uh, homegrown over there in Philly with a receiver room. So that's good for Wilson too. Yeah. Um, one, actually, two guys I like here, both running backs, uh, Vidal and and Labe. You know, those two uh, rookies. Uh, Vidal goes to the Chargers. Labe, Dylan Labe goes to uh, the Raiders. Um, I think immediate value is to me. If I had to pick one of these for uh, dynasty, I think it's going to be La- for a redraft too. I'm going to go with Labe. I mean. Uh, listen, I'm I'm also somebody who rosters and backs um, Zamir White. I think he's earned a look. I think he's going to do well. Um, I wouldn't, you know, somebody asked me the other day, one of my buddies, would you, you know, trade the two o two for um, to give away, uh, you know, Zamir White? And I said no. I think Z- Zamir White's actually going to hit. I think as the season rolls around and we start doing a redraft, uh, I think. Uh, into the preseason, Zamir White's value is going to be even greater than what it is now, um, but twofold because uh, we haven't really seen a big sample size with Zamir White. Um, I do think he he's successful. I think he's the number one when it's all said and done, but just something about Law Bay being like a small school, a uh, good receiver. I think on the West Coast, like he can succeed in this role. Um, I think that they also have Madison there, and I'm not really like mm-hmm. too – uh, crazy about Alex Madison. I think this law Bay is like my preferred handcuff. Now, if Zamir white were to get hurt, it wouldn't surprise me if they get the, the, you know, ro- majority of reps to Alex Madison. But I think just at some point, especially when we're talking dynasty, the law Bay, whether it be this year, next year, week six of this year, some, at some point it's going to hit just because of the player he is, you know, this is a passing game. He can catch the ball. He's quick. He's shifty. I, I, I just uh, looking in my global or in my uh, crystal ball here, I see good days ahead for Dylan Lobe for one reason or another. Yeah. I mean, again, these are stretches. You're, you're talking about players that you don't have to spend a lot of or you just pick up off a waiver. So I think it's a good move. I'm, I think you and I both, we've both talked about it. Alexander Madison's not it. He, he is definitely better suited as a backup. He, he can kind of fill in here or there. So, you know, he's got some value, you know, behind Zamir White, but. I think this team is going to run through Zamir. I think Zamir is going to get plenty of opportunities. So, uh, but Labe could be a handcuff that you may need. I know a lot of people are obviously going to grab Madison. I, I'm, I get it. I'm just not sold. Like I, I don't know. I don't really have any any super super value with him um, at yeah, all. Yeah, Abdullah is still there, right? So like that's yeah. a big kicker too. Abdullah kind of like clouds the whole Labe, but. Don't let it. That's fool's gold. I don't think Amir Abdullah is going to be you know uh, on anyone's team here starting. This season, yeah. I think there's a better chance of Law Bay. Yeah, again, players we're talking about aren't players that you're drafting in your rookie drafts. Like, yeah. unless you've uh, a fourth or fifth round pick and, you know, it's a deep league, sure. But these are players that I think you you should be putting on your list of players you may want to add. Um, we're talking off season, off season. We're talking pl- players that may still end up having to fight for their roster spot. But these are guys that... You know, they put some draft capital in them. I know it's only a, a sixth round or a fifth round, you know, but these are players that are usually end up being the ones that are the role players that add a lot of value to the NFL team. Um, a player I didn't like in this particular round, um, it's not that I don't like him. I just don't like the spot was Joe Milton. I mm. I love this kid as far as the way he, his arm and his, his swagger and the way he plays. Um, but going to New England, I felt was not a great spot for him personally. I thought, you know, if he were to have any possible value in Dynasty, he had to go somewhere else. And, and the team I didn't expect was not New England. Like, I didn't expect New England. You just got your boy, you know, in, in Drake May. You just, you got Jacoby Brissett. Like, I didn't think Milton was, was a value that was needed, but they obviously saw something. I get it. I think he's got a great arm. Uh, there's definitely things that you, you know, Milton tends to Milton it. That's what it, they say. Like he does have those issues, but I thought I, I love this kid. I want him to go to somewhere where they actually can really teach him to be a good quarterback. Like give him, get him out of some of his bad habits and some of his mechanics and get him into a position where he could have had some success. So I hate that he went there. I wish he had gone somewhere else. I wish he could have gone. I'm not saying even Kansas city would have had value, but putting him in Kansas city would have just been such a great thing for Milton himself that he could have some value later on. I mean, he's not replacing him at Mahomes, but just having Andy Reid as his coach and having, you know, obviously Mahomes to look at and a kind of similar play style where he kind of makes some crazy plays and with his arm. But yeah, New England, let's just be honest. They're not known for for producing quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm out. Brady, Brady produced himself. Let's be honest. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm with you on Milton. He would have been far better on another team, especially a team that throws the ball a lot. Um, yeah. You know, New England, uh, they, they're not going to need him. Maybe he's like a Tyson Bajant, you know, do do well in a little flash of a pan, trade him. I don't know. But uh, right now it's not looking good for Joe Milton. So, yeah. So before we go into the final round, final seventh round, and we'll talk some really deep players. Um, one thing I want to talk about with IDP, IDP is what we've got going on with the expo in uh, Ohio. So again, uh, to give you another reason to go to can Ohio for the fantasy football expo, uh, which is in August, which is going to be right around the corner. Um, join IDP. So on Saturday, August 10th at the brew kettle next to the pro football hall of fame, uh, they're going to be doing a drafting extravaganza. Um, the first time ever IDP plus is going to be hosting an IDP league. So this is huge. Like be, so if you want to be part of this, this is the first time, if you want to be part of this in the description, you're able to click on there. You can sign up, be part of the first IDP league with IDP plus hosting this at the brew kettle for the fantasy football expo. And if you have never been to the fantasy football expo, make sure you sign up and, and get tickets and things like that for that. There's a lot of great stuff. You get to network with um, some great people. You get to find out some great stuff. There's some great parties. There's a lot of good stuff coming out of that. So again, sign up in that link um, again. If you're an IDP fan, this is a way to, you know, be there, be part of something fun. And, you know, my, while you're there, go and go enjoy the Hall of Fame as well. So, like, do that, please click on that link. It's, I think you're going to have a great time. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be there, Johnny, but I think the expo is one of the one of the coolest things that are out there. So. Round seven, this is the round that we find Brock Purdy and Tom Brady. This is this is it. Like, this is where we're going to go. Okay. Now, as far as a player that I love, I was torn between two players. But the one player I'm going to mention is a legacy player, and that's going to be Brennan Rice. Like, going to, I think, the Chargers actually was a good move. Um, You know, you got a team that just pretty much got rid of their whole receiving core. Mike Williams is gone. You know, Keenan Allen's gone. They, they, They needed some players. You got, obviously, you know, Guess you would call a I I'm not sold on, but they got their first receiver off the board. Um in 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 McConkie in and, and again not sold on completely. I like the kid, but I think Brandon Rice was a good spot for this draft pick, especially in the seventh round. You didn't have to put a lot of value into it. You get a receiver that I think if he has anywhere near the work ethic and ability that his dad had, you're gonna get a stud especially in the seventh round. Think about it. Jerry Rice was, was drafted late, just like his son was. And what did Jerry Rice end up doing? He used his motivation. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put all this pressure on this kid, but come on. Like, it's a very similar story of what ended up happening. You know, and you've got a kid that I think has the chance to have opportunity because there isn't a super large amount of, of crazy talent coming out of that receiving room. Like, I like Josh Palmer. Don't get me wrong. Jalen Guyton's there. John Quentin Johnston. I still have some hope. I'm still, you know, got a little bit of hope, you know, like there's nothing that's could prevent Brendan Rice to actually have a value even this season. You know, you've still got training camp. You still got things coming up and we'll see how the depth charts end up playing out. But Brendan Rice landed in a spot that he actually could have potential value even in the seventh round. So for me, I thought this was a great spot. I have drafted him in one league of mine in the late third because I said, screw it. I'm going to get Jerry Rice's son because how? why not? Like this kid is in the perfect spot. So I, I really like this landing spot for him. And especially, again, his draft capital is so low, he can fall to you or be on waivers. And I think that's he's worth the risk grabbing because there's nobody who's really replacing these receivers. And I think Rice is one of them. I think that's where this is going to play out. I definitely agree with you, man. That's a that's a really good take, and uh, I think you know Harbaugh coming um, brings a lot of guys from Michigan. I don't think it's like you know when we talk about players tied to a coach. I don't think n- nobody's really tied there, right? This is his first year, Harbaugh. So hey, even though you're a rookie, you got as good a shot to make a good impression as anybody else on that team. And like yeah. Steve mentioned, you know they do have a couple, you know, uh, toss ups. Josh Palmer, we've seen him be great flashes in a pan. Um, then we seen him fall off the face of the earth for half a season. Uh, Quint, Quentin Johnson, yeah, I still like him too, but you know maybe he just doesn't hit. Um, maybe he's Mike Williams. Mike Williams for the Chargers 2017 did not have a 
significant by any means rookie year and then went on to be great uh, in his tenure for the Chargers. So yeah. a lot of ways this could go, but I do like Rice, and I, I expect him to to have some fantasy relevance there being Jerry Rice's son. I just figure it's good for the sport. Uh, looking at my crystal ball again, I could see his name being called um, by the announcer. So I, I, I like it too. I think there's definitely, when we talk about opportunity, um, that's big here in the seventh round, you know, nobody's guaranteed anything. So if you're guaranteed a little bit of opportunity, um, I, I like that. So I back that. And I think he has a good, good pedigree, um, big, big receiver. I think that's what they need over there. And I'm not scared of being a rookie. I think he's a little bit, you know, uh, growing up in the, the lifestyle that he was Jerry Rice's son. I think he's a little bit more um, veteran than other rookies, you know, if that makes sense. So I, I like Rice a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with another wide receiver here. Um, not trying to emulate Puka, you know, listen, if you're looking for this year, Sam Laporta, it's going to be tough. Like don't one year things changed year to year. So it's, you know, we don't have to find Puka here. we got to find somebody who can, um, you know, have opportunity and, and make do with what little opportunity they have. And I mentioned about Troy Franklin bef before uh, going to Denver. Now I see Devon Vele from uh, Utah ended up going to the Broncos too. And if you remember what I said earlier, I don't see Sutton staying, even if he does, I don't see him like being a target hog and having this crazy year, even producing the same numbers, let alone better than last year. Um, so yeah, maybe Mims doesn't hit. Marvin Mims is not a volume receiver. He's like a deep, uh, I play in return yard leagues. Like I think in those kind of leagues, he absolutely will hit this year. Um, but when we talk about volume, really don't have much there in Denver. So when we, when we want opportunity again, nothing's guaranteed with these seven seventh rounders, but if Vele is able to uh, show out in OTAs and in training camp and, and be somebody, I think like last year, even J Jaleel McLaughlin at the running back position was undrafted, but uh, Denver, you know, put a little vote of confidence in him. It didn't matter draft capital, like how late he was, he wasn't even uh, drafted, but they gave him a shot, you know? So like, that's what we're looking here. Uh, looking for here is just a shot. Not not going to say anything's going to throw to the wall and stick, but hey, you never know. It might. Puka Nakua last year, all he needed. I told a buddy. I literally was in. I, I was like, man, I can't drop anybody. But I think the best player available right now, based on opportunity, is Puka. And he ended up picking up Puka in there. And then I'm in week seven, trading him like Rasheed Rice and you know Devonte Smith for Puka, who I told him to pick up. So uh, opportunity is key. I think that's most important here. And I think Vele has the opportunity to to be uh, not only uh, on the field, but on your fantasy teams as well. Yeah, I mean, just like anything else, like when you've got a new regime, like Sean Payton's second year now uh, going into Denver, like he wants his guys, you know, and that matters. And you're talking about a receiving team, receiving core that really doesn't have a super large amount of like top tier talent. So like anybody can fight to get a spot there. Um, so yeah, I think that could be a nice little move there. Who I didn't like in as far as the landing spot was Jaheim Bell from Florida State. I felt like as a talented tight end, I thought he could have gone to a different landing spot. You go to a team that's got Hunter Henry, Austin Hooper, like you've got players there that are already established and, and have veteran presence and a role that they're going to be in. Uh, Bell doesn't necessarily fall into that position. I thought Bell, I would have loved to have seen Bell go to like Cincinnati. I thought that was going to be a great spot for him. Um, because they, I think they could have used his talent at tight end because um, he's got some big play abilities. He was one of my favorite tight ends coming into this draft, and he ends up being near the end of the draft, which hurts my heart because I, I loved what he was able to do at Florida State. So I just didn't love the landing spot. I mean, I felt, man, New England was not where I wanted to see this guy go. I felt, like, again, since he was a good spot, New York Jets were a good spot. Like there were teams that need a tight end that could – you know, he can get 35 to 50 receptions and have some good value in, in, in that role. But now he's now the third on the depth chart and really essentially is now kind of negated as far as fantasy goes. You know what? I, I repeat that. I, I back that. And to the, my, my thing is history. History, like looking at the, the Patriots, when have they had a successful tight end? It might happen this year. It might be Bobby O'Karrake. But guess what? I'm going to stay on that hill until I'm wrong. So. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think there's de better opportunities. Now, when we talk about a uh, chance to play, I, I think he's, you know, that may be a better um, team for him to get on the field. But, you know, as yeah. far as upside, as far as how good can he be as a fantasy tight end, hey, I, 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 didn't, I wasn't counting on uh, rookie tight ends. Laporta, Kincaid, I wasn't last year. I said, oh, rookie tight end. You know, so maybe uh, crazier things have happened. But, yeah, yeah you, you definitely have to be on the field to be successful. He can do that. But, 
Um, you know, with with maybe the tides change. Now they have different quarterbacks, new head coach, maybe. But still, I'm just going to stay on that hill until uh, I'm, I'm wrong. So I'm out on him. Um, and, and one other guy that I, I thought uh, not really disrespect to him. I don't want to say that. Taj Washington here uh, out of USC. You know, that Miami drafts him in the seventh round. But one guy I liked um, that really clouded things up for Taj Washington now is um, Malik. Malik, uh, what was his last name? And the, the round before from Virginia Tech. Malik Washington. Yeah, right? Washington. Malik Washington. I think that that's the guy, like when we talk about Miami, we talked about Johnny Smith when he got signed uh, to Miami. It's like, wow, he has some speed at the tight end. They're a speedy offense, right? I think Malik Washington could definitely earn some looks there, like maybe a, a poor man's, well, maybe even man's uh, Pop Douglas, something like that. So um, maybe he gets a role in that offense and, and the speed that he has. That I know a couple of weeks ago there was big hype on him, maybe being like a third, fourth rounder. So slipped a little bit, but – maybe uh, is a late bloomer and somebody who uh, we're going to be talking about here in 2024, um, especially in, in dynasty. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about some great players of that. We went, you know, we went through each round and talked about players that we loved and felt had some value that may, again, may not be the mainstream name. Um, and obviously some players that we obviously weren't in love with. Um, so next week we are going to talk defensive players. It's again, we are IDP. So we're going to obviously talk defensive players next week to help you guys out with any of your, uh, rookie thoughts and where these players are going and you know how they could have some value for your rookie drafts because a lot of people are probably already started or getting ready to start their rookie drafts so again we got some great content now if you guys want even more content like this whether it be podcasts youtube videos articles um again like i'm working on some articles right now for idp make sure you guys sign up for uh your subscription right now at idp uh, plus.com you can get a first month subscription for a dollar. So all you have to do is go to checkout, add the promo code mock draft and your first month will be $1. And I guarantee you, you will love what you get for a dollar. There is nothing you can get nowadays for a dollar. You can't even buy a pack of gum. I was disappointed. You can't do, even get that. So for $1, give yourself the advantage, get the ability to get all this analysis that we're giving you, not just through obviously things like this, but also our articles get update, you know, rankings and different things like that for $1. So that way you're getting ahead of the curve, getting ahead of your league mates. Um, and that way, you, you again, once you do that dollar, I guarantee you're going to keep that subscription. We've got stuff going all off season during the season. There's so much stuff that we add value for you guys. So again, make sure you guys do that, um, please. And then read our articles, listen to our beautiful voices. Um, you guys have it. Make sure you guys are following me on X. I'm AVG Joe's underscore FF. And make sure you guys are following Johnny at Johnny freaking F1. Subscribe to the channel. Don't be crazy. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And we'll be back for some defensive players next week. Bless up, guys. Definitely sign up for the rookie. $1. You know, cancel it after if you want. You're guaranteed you're going to be rocking with us. Uh, a pack of gum might not be $1, but this $1 might help you win 3000 300 whatever your pot is. So um, thanks for walking with us. We look forward to talking about rookies next time.